Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So I have the Leader HD here for review today. Now this was sent to me by Banggood for review and I've been using it for two weeks before I come out and bring in my final verdict of this. Now it has a lot of cons that are way more than the pros in my opinion. So let's get started. Now as you all know, this is the new trend which is basically a micro brushless, almost whoop sized with an HD camera built on board such as the Cadex, Foxier or Runcam. So currently this one's using the Cadex camera. So something to take note of right out of the box is to be honest, the execution is not the best possible. Now, for example, let's take a closer look. This is where your VTX antenna is. It's just coming off the side here and I bet you it's by IPEX port. Here's your RX antenna for your receiver, which is just sticking out on the bottom like this. At least it's using an XT30. And the battery tray here, as you can tell, it's a 3D printed piece that will not fit anything other than a 2S. However, on a 2S, it is really slow and very sluggish. Um, when I first received it, I took it out hoping that it's going to be somewhat usable outside. It was basically impossible to use outside on a 2S. So after getting some, you know, 3S HV LiPos, it became actually usable even indoors. Indoors on a 2S feels really, really uh, sluggish. And when you go through something like a doorway or, or a hallway, the turbulence of the wind will actually have it lose its attitude as well as its altitude. So it, you'll have to fight it to keep it uh, leveled and just flying great. So flying this on a 2S, in my opinion, isn't really great. On a 3S, it's been holding out fine. I haven't had any issues. Now, out of the box experience, it's somewhat good, but not fully there because a lot of the settings were not really set up correctly. Uh, basically, it's one really important setting, which is to have it auto record and auto stop recording. This did not have it set up, so I had to go in there and set it up. But what's really nice is they've at least prepared the cable for you, which I was just able to sneak right out of there, plug it in and change the settings that I needed here. So currently that's something that I had to do other than binding it. Now, also you will have to set up your modes in Betaflight. Now, also there's a couple other things to take note of. For the battery trays, you can tell I've cut it off again because they only fit 2S and I needed to use 3S. There is a Thingiverse replacement, so you can go ahead to Thingiverse and you'll find. There's only like two pieces for this. I just wanted to check it because I also wanted to create one, but since someone's already created, I'm gonna probably start printing it to fit these in. Because currently what I do to fly with the 3S, I bring in the smallest battery strap I have and actually wrap it around the whole frame so it can actually hold the battery. So that's not really ideal. Uh, that's not really something that it just not really attractive. It's 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 more it's always about the ease of use to, when you're gonna fly a micro. Just put in that battery, really nice, really rigid. You don't have to keep messing and fussing around with it to get a battery to hold. That's really annoying. So out of the box, this is a really terrible mounting solution for the batteries. Also, the canopy wasn't really well thought through in my opinion. I mean, okay, if you take a closer up, look up here, you're like, what the hell is this? Is this a buzzer? But actually, that's not the buzzer. This is the microphone coming in from the Cadex up here. I don't know why they've done that, but uh, for me personally, I always just cut that microphone off. But some people like the audio. For me, I don't. So I'm probably going to cut that off. Someone also created a different canopy for this on Thingiverse. Hopefully you're having a, you have a 3D printer in order to enable you to get a lower angle on your camera tilt. So you're able to fly pretty smoothly inside, in my opinion, because this is somewhat pretty steep to fly indoors, especially if you have a very small area. Um, so, yeah, that's also another con of mine here. The overall frame looks pretty solid. It's a mixture of carbon fiber and plastic. The plastic here has a lot of flex to it. As you can tell, I've already damaged one of the props right here, but it's not really bad. And these props possibly are not the most efficient for such a setup. And um, I don't know if these are really ducted uh, prop guards here or they're just prop guards. I, we, I can't really tell currently, but I do have testing on the way that we'll actually test this stuff. and. Um, the equipment is actually coming. I'm going to be testing these motors on the channel as well as props for such builds here because there isn't really much information online and I kind of want to figure out what's good and what's not good. Um, but the overall performance, it performs okay. Nothing spectacular. On 2S, it's pretty dead. 3S, you, you'll have some good flights in. Uh, efficiency, I consider it not that efficient uh, in my opinion. Uh, camera quality, obviously it's the Cadex, so you guys there's a bunch of videos online on the Cadex right now. I've used it too. For me personally, I kind of like the Fox here more, but that's just a personal preference. Wide dynamic range actually works pretty good. And there's some specific areas where when you have it off, you really can't see some details because of the lighting. 
condition. So in that perspective, it's just working great. Overall, so far, it's running decent. I haven't had any issues with it. But personally, I just wouldn't actually purchase this, in my opinion. I'll probably get like the Mobula HD, Mobula 7 HD, because I also have that one as well. I'll probably do a shootout with that video. But overall, um, it flies good, though. There isn't anything wrong with it. But just the overall execution and the ease of access of how to, you know, set up a battery and just everything is just more of a nightmare and it needs a lot of fiddling around to get to work just right. You also need to figure out a place for the VTX antenna. You need to figure out a place for your antenna. Now, I mean, if you're if you're just getting into this and you break this SMA uh, antenna, you're going to have to find yourself another one. But the whole execution of how everything is set up isn't really user friendly in my opinion and they could have done a little bit better here. And I'm going to leave it at that guys. I'll leave you with some flight footage and I'll see you in the next one.